OK, in this mini tutorial we're going to look at how the circle of Willis is formed um, and we're going to also look at the related blood vessels, all of which provide arterial supply to the brain. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw out these vessels um, and then we're going to look at how they appear on a cadaveric specimen and also in an angiogram. So let's start off um, in building up the cerebral circulation with the vertebral arteries. So let's start by drawing on the vertebrals. So there are the two vertebral arteries. Um, we'll label those. So vertebral artery. Coming together to form the basilar artery. And the basilar artery is one of the few midline arteries in the body. So there is the basilar artery there in the midline. I'm not giving you full names, just to save space. Um, what you can see then happens is that the basilar artery splits into two, okay, to form the two posterior cerebral arteries, okay? So these are the posterior cerebral arteries there. And they're formed as the bifurcation of the basilar artery. Now, we need to add on some branches of the vertebrals and the basilar arteries. Okay? Um, the first branch I want to add on um, comes off of the, uh, usually off of the vertebral arteries, around about here and here. And these are the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries. Okay? So they're the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries, which come off of the vertebrals, usually. Additionally, from each vertebral, but closer to the midline, we have a branch coming off and contributing to a midline vessel that runs down along the anterior surface of the spinal cord, and this is the anterior spinal artery. Okay, so the anterior spinal artery forms um, from two converging branches of the vertebrals in the midline. We've mentioned the uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, the pica, um, and now we need to add on the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, um, which usually comes, on, comes off near to where the two vertebrals coalesce. So here are the two anterior inferior cerebellar arteries. Okay. And then, branching off of the pons, there are many small branches Sorry, branching off of the basilar artery, there are many small branches going into the pons. And these are the pontine arteries, okay? The pontine arteries going into the pons. Um, and these are very, very important because they supply a lot of the corticospinal fibres running down through the pons itself. Then, most, um, looking superiorly, we have the superior cerebellar arteries, so this is the superior cerebellar arteries there. And then finally, of course, the posterior cerebral arteries here. Okay? And in fact, this, what we've drawn, constitutes the, the, the posterior circulation, as it's known, since it derives primarily from the vertebral arteries. Next, let's draw on the elements of the anterior circulation. Um, and what we need to do is start off with our um, internal carotids. So our internal carotids ascend up through the carotid canal and they form a number of branches. Okay, so there's one internal carotid, there's another internal carotid there. Okay. Now the major continuation of the internal carotids is are the middle cerebral arteries. So these are the middle cerebral arteries here. Okay. Another vital branch coming off of the internal carotids are the anterior cerebral arteries. So these are the anterior cerebral arteries there. And at roughly the same point as where the anterior cerebrals come off, we have a communicating branch which connects the anterior circulation with the posterior circulation. And these are here. These are the posterior communicating arteries. And finally, we have a branch connecting the two anterior cerebrals, and those are known as, that is known as the anterior communicating artery. 
All right? So those are the major elements of the cerebral circulation. Um, and as I'm sure you've read in your books, um, this circular arrangement, um, although variable, does have, to a greater or lesser extent, some physiological relevance, um, because to a certain extent a blockage at one point can be compensated for by blood sometimes flowing in a retrograde manner to bypass that blockage. Um, but that will be dealt with in more detail elsewhere. This is meant to be just the basic introduction. So those are the major elements of our cerebral circulation. Let's see if we can see these in the cadaveric image. So if we look at the image on the top right, um, your first um, important landmark that will help you to um, orientate yourself is the big midline basilar artery. Okay, so there's very clearly the basilar artery running in the midline over the pons, and you can see these very small pontine branches coming off of it laterally. You can see how the basilar artery is formed by the coalescence of the two vertebrals here. And if you look really hard, you can see probably what is a posterior inferior cerebellar artery there. And with the eye of faith, you could say that maybe this is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery here. The superior cerebellar artery is quite clear in this image at this point and at this point here, as are the posterior cerebral arteries here and here which is the bifurcation of the basilar artery. You can see the posterior communicating artery there, and another one there. And that's communicating with um, the, roughly the junction between the internal carotid here and the middle cerebral artery, which isn't visible on this side, but which you can just about see on this side. Then, coming off of the internal carotid, we've got the anterior cerebral artery there and there with the anterior communicating artery crossing the midline and it's important that you should note that this arterial circle surrounds a lot of important structures for example the optic chiasm here looking at the um, angiogram once again use the basilar artery as your main landmark in the midline there it's formed by the coalescence of the two vertebrals here. And you can see quite nicely um, a posterior inferior cerebellar artery just there coming off of the vertebral. This may be the anterior inferior cerebellar artery here, but we can't really see any uh, pontine branches coming off the basilla. This is the superior um, cerebellar artery here, and then we've got the two posterior cerebral arteries there. All right. Now, as it happens, the posterior communicating artery in this view is superimposed by the internal carotid as it ascends. But we can see the internal carotid ascending to form the middle cerebral artery and all of its branches here, and then forming the anterior cerebral artery here, going up towards the midline. And there is the anterior communicating artery. So these are the major branches of the circle of Willis. Um, it's important for you to be aware of where they lie in the brain and also which territories of the brain they're going to supply. And that's going to be the subject of some of our future videos.